Jack Shore versus Joe Anderson Brito. This one is much closer in odds, much closer fight. Jack Shore has been in combat sports since he was six. His dad actually owned a gym, a combat gym, and he, he's been doing and training with his dad uh, pretty much all his life. He's a specialist at the rear naked choke. Um, he comes from behind to win um, a lot, but he's pretty good. He's got good counters and takedowns. Joe Anderson Brito, very, very strong. I was really impressed with his strength. Uh, he comes out fast. He can win in all methods. He's got good grappling. And where I'm going to see the difference here, and I'll say it again later in the episode, is he doesn't give you any space while grappling. He wants to be in control, and he doesn't want you to be able to slip in anything. And when you can stay on top of guys like that and keep that pressure on, it makes it really hard for guys to do anything. So I think that Brito, I'm going to have him winning this by staying out of danger. I think that's going to be the deciding factor. Uh, with the odds right now, minus 175, I'll probably just do that because I can see Brito winning in, like I said, any method. So I will keep that nasty number, but partly is to, partly is also because this is going to be a tough fight to judge, and I can see it going either way. What, what side are you on, Bobby? This is actually really good matchmaking because you have two pretty good prospects here at the featherweight 145 pound division. Joe Anderson Brito, 29, 16, 3, and 1. Jack Shore, another young guy. Uh, full disclaimer, I have been on the Jack Shore hype train since his uh, Contender Series, I believe it was. Yes, Contender Series debut in the UFC. So, you know, I'm trying not to let that color my perception of this whole fucking ordeal too much here. But yeah, I do like Jack Shore. I will say that. Uh, some things that are interesting to me here that make this so fucking difficult are the fact that, and I say it time and time again, and it's very difficult to not play into it, but with guys that are this young in their career, and I've said a million fucking times, I'm going to stop beating a dead horse here and get to the point, <laughs> which is, I don't play MMA math, but goddamn, sometimes I have to. So where I'm getting at with this, your Anderson Brito, Weston Wilson, he ground and pounded him in round one, two minutes, 54 seconds back in July last year, right? Now, I've done some grounding and pounding in college myself here, but what I'm getting at <laughs> is Weston Wilson came from a really odd trailer park style, trashy Dollar General. It's called Rough and Tough or Tough Enough or some bullshit like that promotion out in Vegas. That's kind of just like a... Uh, Hey, if you can't afford the UFC or, you know, a fucking Bellator or a PFL ticket or whatever, come here, get drunk and watch some fucking bums we pulled off the street or some fucking nerd ass, bitch ass BuzzFeed reporter who's trying to, you know, get like two fucking deciliters of testosterone per fucking milliliter in this fucking goddamn system. So he's going to do MMA training for a month and then fight some fucking can to try to prove something to himself on some vision quest type shit. Come watch him get his ass kicked type promotion. So Weston Wilson beating him and then him having two UFC fights with two fucking finish losses. I feel like Weston Wilson's a fluffer. All right. And break out the camera. Cause we're shooting porn here with all the fucking fluff. This man has on his resume. <laughs> Jonathan Pierce calls himself JSP mimicking George St. Pierre GSP. How fucking dare you, Greta Thunberg style? How dare you use G GSP's moniker, you motherfucker? Because you fucking suck. Darren Elkins, Maquan Irmokani, Mr. Finlan, Christian Rodriguez, those are your best fucking wins. Kai Kamaka the third. You didn't beat Kai Kamaka the second or the fucking first. Who the fuck even is Kai Kamaka? It sounds like a Dragon Ball Z fucking reference. Uh, you ran away from Sean Woodson. Uh, you lost to Joe Lozon in 2019. I love Joe Lozon, but it's 2019 Joe Lozon, buddy. What the fuck's wrong with you? Are you feverish? So that's JSP, who Joe Anderson Brito beat. Uh, who else? Lucas Alexander. Let's take a look at Lucas Alexander. Eight and four. Uh, lost November last year to Zheka Sirig. Don't even know who the fuck that is. B 
beat Steven Peterson, lost to Anderson Brito, and that's it. That's his three UFC fights. Two losses, one win. Speaks for itself. Read between the lines there, folks. Uh, Andre Feely, that's pretty good. You know, Andre Feely two years ago, stopping him with punches round one, that's pretty good. Losing to Bill Algio, that's a bit sus. Uh, January 20. I am impressed that he beat Diego Lopez to get into the UFC yeah. and contender series 2021. That's his most impressive one right there. Yeah. But other than that, man, I'm really not seeing much to justify the odds in my mind when that's the caliber of competition that you fought. And I am impressed that they've been finishes, uh, except for the Algeo fight that he lost and he didn't finish Lopez, Diego Lopez. So I'm just really confused uh, as to what the fuck the odds makers are kind of thinking with this one here, other than the fact that, you know, Ricky Simone beat Jack Shore two years ago by an arm triangle choke in round two. That does concern me. And don't get me wrong, his last win himself, I'll talk shit about this on him too. March last year, he beat Mr. Finland with a rear naked choke. Timor Vell live. I mean, Neither one of these guys have really beat anybody that fucking crazy other than no. Diego Lopez. I do like the Cage Warriors uh, resume, though. You know how much I've been standing Cage Warriors lately, mm -hmm. if you follow me on Twitter. I also like the International Mixed Martial Arts Federation European uh, credentials. IMMAF is a pretty good organization, and it's uh, supplied some good talent. Like, uh, off the top of my head, Brendan Allen came from there. Pretty good organization that yeah. really puts some good amateur uh, fighters against each other. So that's pretty fucking decent. All that to say, yeah, this is a bit difficult. I won't lie to you. But I would rather go down with my boys than pick somebody who's the favorite just because they're the favorite type shit. So all that to say, I'll just take Jack Shore at the money line. I like the Welsh Dragon. Oh, his nickname's the Tank. Missed opportunity there. But... I'll take him just because that's my boy and just because, you know, the odds are a little bit sus to me, a little bit odd. So fuck it. Why not? Money line if I can be profitable. That's how I'm rocking. You better start listening to the Better in Green podcast. You will not regret it. Trust me, trust me, trust me. And hey, I'm Dean Blandino. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Better Win Green, eh? To Better Win Green, eh? To Better Win Green, eh? Listen in and cash out. That's what it's all about. Come on, let's make cash now. We always on spot and we cover all spot from the bottom to the top, eh? Hey, shout out to Ethan, shout out to Wyatt, shout out to Ben. Welcome, welcome to our podcast. Better Win Green.